there be treasures upon these seas. Only shooting stars break the This video and my channel are sponsored by Whatnot. What's Whatnot? Whatnot is what's behind me. Whatnot is a website where you can buy and sell cool collectibles like trading cards or comic books or toys or even clothing with other collectors. It's both a streaming platform and a sales platform. So you can actually watch a streamer open up a pack of, say, magic cards and then buy the cards that are in that pack. It's a really cool system. It's really fun. And if you'd like to sign up, you should definitely use the code in the description of my video because if you do, then it supports me as a creator and it also gets you $15 off your first purchase. It's great all around. Thank you again to Whatnot for sponsoring this video. Hello everybody and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm Amy the Amazonian and today I'm playing one of my favorite decks, Crucius Titan of the Waves. This deck is very good, very fun, very strong, and one of the most mid-range experiences you can have. It has a serious reanimation theme to it because Crucius is good at putting cards into the graveyard. Crucius, if you're not familiar with this card, it is only available in Arena. At the beginning of your end step, you can discard a card from your hand. Then you choose Ambitious or Expedient. If you choose Ambitious, then you get a card that has a higher cost than a card you discarded. If you choose Expedient, you get one with a lesser cost. You can set this up in a deck if you have a deck that's almost entirely one drops to tutor for specific creatures, or you can make it very balanced out like mine. This also gives you a treasure when you discard the card to this ability, which means you're ramping. It's Rakdos Ramp, and that gives you the perfect opportunity to not just reanimate big scary creatures like Ulamog or Cityscape Leveler, but to play them from your hand, then maybe bring them back after they die. This deck is super fun, and it also makes use of a lot of cards with madness, like Blazing Rootwalla or Fiery Temper or Terminal Agony, since we're discarding cards to Crucius's ability. Very often, people will kill Crucius right when he comes down. That's why the mid-range strategy is on point. You may have, you know, realized there's a lot of good cards that came out in Rakdos in the last few years. That's red and black, these two colors. And yeah, it's true. There's a reason why there's a bunch of cards in this deck that are actually banned in the current standard. Looking at you, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Some of the best cards in this deck might actually come as a surprise though, because you might be thinking, okay, well, we're ramping, we're doing that. What's with all this treasure stuff? Well, Magda, Zorn, Kalein, Crucius, Ragavan, we're making treasures and that helps us get even more ramp for these sweet big creatures. So we're going to go ahead and take Crucius into the queue and start pillaging. Zen is playing Corvold, Bay Cursed King, and they go first. This hand is four, five, and ten drops, and Crucius on three. But since we're on the play, I think I'm going to have to mulligan to try and find some earlier stuff. And we do have some earlier stuff here. I've got Undercity Plunder and Professional Facebreaker. Oh, and a Feed the Swarm. A nice little uh, removal for enchantments or creatures. Corvold, if you're not familiar, by the way, is the Jund Vor Dragon. A card that I will say has constantly gotten better. And also, yeah, I'm removing Xander's Wake. It's uh, good. This is not a card that should exist. It's a mistake of a card, and I'm eliminating it from this fight. It's worth the two life and the two mana. Corvold draws you cards when you sacrifice things and gets bigger since he's a flyer. That means that the evasion adds up really fast for some serious damage. I see they want to make some treasures. Well, I want to make some treasures too. Treasures, of course, being more common means Corvold sees more sacrificable things. This land's also quite sacrificable. Hmm. To block or not to block. No blocks. Priest of Forgotten Gods, and a Gold Hound. The Gold Hound has the Racketeer boss ability, so it came with a treasure. Priest of Forgotten Gods can force me to do some sacrificing. But look at all these little guys! Uh, I'm gonna discard Blazing Rootwalla and Professional Facebreaker here. I'm hoping to get a land. Also, now I have a free Rootwalla. Sweet. Madness. I'm going to attack in. I was really hoping for a land here. Boop. 
Shatter Skull Smashing. Currently, I can take out some of these threats, but since I have something I'm pretty open about sacrificing, I feel like we're going to need to play this as a land. And I will pay the life for it. Or will I? I'm thinking, like, do I want to get out the Goldspan Dragon or wait until next turn? I'm going to have this enter tapped. I'm going to play Crucius. I'm going to discard one of these mana rocks. I'm going to drop the Skyclave Relic. I'm going to choose something that costs less. I'm actually looking for a land or removal, and I did find removal. Infernal Grasp, able to kill Corvold. They'll be able to draw a lot of cards first. Or we just do this. Make them do everything all at once. So they actually just sacrifice that treasure. They can sacrifice the other one too. Interesting. This can be sacrificed for mana. They don't quite have enough to replay him, but it's, it's close. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, but Harrow might get them a little bit more, sacrificing a land, giving them two more mana, using up that mana they had floating off the treasures, but drawing them more cards. This is why Corvold, by the way, very kill on sight. This guy is scary. Corvold's just thinking like, do I need anything else? Am I doing pretty well? You're a big, scary dragon, Corvold. A big, scary dragon. They're sacrificing Corvold before my kill spell resolves. By the way, Corvold does see himself being sacrificed and says, Ooh, I die. <laughs> more cards for me. They've got four mana floating. They still have to sacrifice one more thing. But they've got land or elf. They've got lands. Racketeer boss doesn't need to stick around. Nice, an arcane signet. Good use of that mana. Gives them more ramp. They'll be able to replay Corvold next turn. Not sure if they'll want to. And Colgan's command. Going to make me discard. I'm going to discard the Celestis. And I'll take another three. Racketeer boss. Golly, I really don't want to have to meat hook massacre my own reflection of Kiki Jiki. Do I think it's safe to wait one turn? To wait one turn? I'm gonna go for it. Swing in for three. And I am going to discard under city plunder. I'm going to choose lesser. I am looking for a little bit of land at this point, and I did just find some. Land means a potential gold span and a clone on the same turn. And that means more treasures, more fun. Got five cards in hand because all of that card draw off Corval really added up. And they also draw a card off the priest's ability. Ah. This Ob Nixilis just came down onto the battlefield without the help of sacrificing your features. So there's only one copy of this Ob Nixilis. They didn't use the casualty. One, two, three, four mana. Probably worth acknowledging. We've got our gold span dragon. Killing this Nightmare Shepherd. They've got choices to make. If they go for the Priest or Forgotten Gods here, I think I actually can sacrifice Crucius pretty easily. I'm making a copy of Goldspan Dragon. Now we've got two of them. So we'll be spitting out more treasures. I'll attack with the Nightmare Shepherd at Obnixilis and the other two at their face. I could also, like, make a clone and sacrifice the clone. Great, I have them exactly where I want them. This might seem a little weird. 
But we're Meat Hook Massacring, killing our own reflection of Kiki Cheeky. Remember, I have that Nightmare Shepherd out. Nightmare Shepherd will do Nightmare Shepherd things. Whenever another non-token creature I control dies, I may exile it if I do create a token that's a copy of that creature. Except it's a 1-1 and a Nightmare in addition to its other type. Now, how is that going to work on this battlefield? Because I know that they're killing one of my things. Sacrifice a creature. Uh, sure, I'll sacrifice this token. Since it's going to die anyway. We're going to decline moving our commander to the command zone so we can make a clone! Exile. Yes, please. And now we'll move it to the command zone. Gotta be careful with all those. And it also sees this because it was a creature on the battlefield. Reflection of Kikijiki. Back in play. We also have this Crucius. We're going to discard this land. We're going to choose something that costs more than zero. Noxious Gear Hulk. Big stinky. Removal on a stick gains you life, too. Corvold could come into play and would be a 5-5 after just that one sacrifice trigger. Able to block Nightmare Shepherd, Goldspan, Dragon. And these guys are just so whittle. But really, Reflection of Kikijiki, it doesn't matter if this is a 1-1. One, one. It could have been a 0-1. Because it's still going to make a copy of the Goldspan, Dragon. And go in for the kill. GG, Corvold. Zergo and Ojitai, oftentimes a control commander these days. This is a dragon, a fast dragon that goes fast, hits face, and then can go back into hand. It also has hexproof on the turn it enters the battlefield, which means that you can protect it over and over and over. I'm going to throw down this Agadim, the Undercrypt, so we can set up for a little bit of ramp, or maybe stepping on something, if there's something to step on. Probably not. Just by virtue of how Zergo and Ojitai's colors and, well, abilities work, it's really good to support Zergo and Ojitai with lots of board wipes. And, well, Planeswalkers. That's what I expect to see out of this person's deck. I'm gonna do something kind of strange here. I'm casting Elspeth's Nightmare with no creatures. I'm purely doing this to be able to see their hand and make them discard. Now, I don't know what got foretold. This could be a counter spell or a extra turn spell or a board wipe since they're also in white it could be burn probably not card draw it's there's a good selection of cards that this could be let's see they've got a disdainful stroke wandering ever dovin's veto and lightning bolt get out of here get out of here Not Infernal Grasp. We can feed the swarm. See if they'll veto this. They did not. If I play Crucius, uh, Crucius would normally die to a lightning bolt, but we have some special tech called Kalane. Kalane lets me come into play with an extra plus one, plus one counter. Nice three damage you have against my four, four. Grabbing some red so you can play your commander next turn. Yep, there's a mountain. And behold the multiverse. It was card draw that they had in exile. A little surprised they didn't do that while this was still on the stack to uh, try and counteract it. I'm going to drop Bone Crusher Giant. It can stomp on a planeswalker, but I don't think that's going to be enough. So I'm going to drop that. I'm going to grab something that costs more than three. We got Inferno of the Star Mountain, uncounterable dragon. Something maybe to counteract their dragon. Justice Strike, Crucius punches himself in the face. And everybody laughed. Stop hitting yourself. We exile our graveyard. Bye, gravy. Yeah. I want to be aggressive. Be aggressive. Inferno of the Star Mounts. We know that they have a Disdainful Stroke, which would be able to counter this. We know they have Lightning Bolt, which would be able to kill this. But what we've got is a dragon. A big dragon. And hopefully not a dead dragon. Oh, nice. They even had a sensor here. Like, oh, are you going to tap out? Are you going to tap out? 
I'm gonna slap out. Get him! Heading for seven in the air. Now, unlike their dragon, when my dragon hits, it doesn't give me a card. This one draws them cards. It anticipates, I believe. Yes, it looks at the top three cards that are library, one into their hand, rest onto the bottom of the library in any order. I believe that is anticipate. Does Zergo and Ojutai go back into hand or stay on the battlefield so they don't have to pay for it again? Okay. This is completely fair. And it's also a fine time for murder or maybe getting down another creature. Arc Fiends of Ifnir. This could trade with Zergo and Ojutai. It doesn't die to Lightning Bolt and I can get onto the battlefield while they're tapped out. I was thinking we just kill Zergo and Ojutai, but this way I'm threatening. Okay, well, you're threatening too. They Rivers rebuked me. And I don't have enough mana to replay this. But I do have enough mana for Ragavan. Don't play any lands. Don't play any lands. I need to cause monkey business. I need to cause monkey business so bad. All right, I could actually replay Inferno of the Star Mounts. But like, monkey. <laughs> I'm sure everybody understands. If I have the opportunity to do monkey business, I will do monkey business. In monkey business, I did do. Gonna throw down this Shatter Skull and Emptor Tapped. And hmm, they've got Disdainful Stroke, Dovin's Veto, and also a dead Zergo Nojitai. You can recast it if you'd like, but that's gonna require you tapping out an awful lot more. Also, monkey, return to me. Thank you, monkey. I appreciate you. You're a very good monkey. Ragavan. It's a good card. Probably shouldn't be in this format, but so long as it is, it shall be. We're gonna replay Inferno of the Star Mounts. Now, if they have a kill spell, if they have a way to exile it, if they have something to deal with this, then we don't win this turn. That is a lightning bolt. What else do you have? Another lightning bolt? Spit flame. Okay. Spit flame it is that is going to kill Inferno with the star mounts. Hey, how you doing? I'm Ragavan. They do have Hall of Storm Giants, which would be able to block my monkey. Spit flame returns to their hands since they do have the ability to pay the one. Oh, wow, they're attacking me. I thought they would have stayed back. Like, oh, yeah, there's a monkey here. I wonder what card they got. A counter spell, a kill spell, anything funky. <gasps> Goldspan dragon? It's not lethal, but pretty close. In we go. Ragavan and Goldspan dragon. Making treasures, doubling what they do. Maybe we can get a shock off their deck? That's a Wrath of God. <laughs> sure. This is a Wrath of God. Arkfiend of Ifnir. Just gonna chill, just gonna vibe, just gonna hang. They're lighting them up. You staying back to defend? No, they're swinging in. Would you like to counter this? You have a Dovin's Veto in hand. I can see it. I know that you've got it. They do, in fact, veto it. Now, I'm down to five life. They have three mana open. We still know they have a disdainful stroke. But you don't have a way to deal with my monkey. I had fun. Good game. Itali Primal Conqueror, the Crimosaurus. I've got ramp, and they've got ramp too, because their deck's all about ramping into their commander playing it, and then getting to cast the top spell of each player's library for free. It's great. 
I love Atali. I feel like the card is super duper good. And I feel like the people playing it will probably agree because that's why they're playing this card. Atali is a very, very popular commander right now. So if you're wondering, Amy, why does it seem like you play against an Atali every single video? It's because there's a lot of Atalis out there because it's such a fun card to play. So they're ramping. They got down the goose. They got down a arcane signet. Let's see. I've got mana. Mana to spare. Go ahead and get Crucius out. I'm going to discard Noxious Gear Hulk and look for something that costs more. Cityscape Leveler. Hello. They've got one, two, three, four, five mana here. Any rampers? Invasion of Zendikar is going to get them two more lands. If they play a land next turn, they can certainly get out their commander or just use this goose. And get loose with the goose. Dogmoth's Vile Offering. I'd like to save it so I can kill two things with this Noxious Gear Hulk. So for now, I think we're going to take this turn to ramp. I could either kick the Skyclave Relic or we could start paying life with this uh, Black Market Connections. I'm just going to kick this. This comes in with two copies of itself. They're all indestructible. It's kind of cool. I'm going to discard Black Market Connections and get something that costs more. Paying life against a deck that's kind of aggressive like this, I don't think is going to be a great idea. As fun as it is to make three twos and draw cards and make treasures, we have other things to do. Here comes Itali. By the way, this Itali also does transform into a trampling, indestructible, poison counter dealing, blight seal colossus dinosaur. It's really good. Ooh, Bond of Revival. They have no creatures to reanimate, but we have creatures to reanimate. We're gonna bring back Noxious Gear Hulk and kill Gilded Goose. Noxious Gear Hulk then going to kill their other creature, gaining me seven life. Will they be able to replay Atali? Yeah, almost certainly. It's not going to take that long. That's what their deck does. It replays Atali. I'm going to make some spiders. Some spider to men. Or just regular spiders. I'm going to drop Sokens on. Look for something that costs more. Since we have so much mana, we can just cast Cityscape Leveler. How much mana do they have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wolf Willow gives them more ramp. This now taps for two green. Hour of Devastation to deal five to everything, destroying them. Doesn't deal five to the battle, though, because this does not name battles. It says creature and non bolus Planeswalker. I'm going to just pop down a couple creatures here. Get down the face breaker. And then the cityscape leveler. I'm going to destroy their arcane signet. This will give them a tapped power stone, which they can still use for mana, but only for abilities and non-artifact spells. Or sorry, artifact spells. I'm so good at speaking. Topiary Stomper grabs them a basic land, puts it into play, and that should give them seven lands, which means this can now attack or block. Guardian Idol can be turned into a 2-2. Two -two. It's more ramp. And Legion Carrier Teed means they'll have two blockers, unless we destroy one. I was saying, that menace. Woo, that menace, though. I think I'm actually going to start with a casual lightning bolt onto this plant. I'm going to swing in. Destroy Wolf Willow Haven. Would you care to block? Prevent some of that damage. They did not. We get a treasure. We could sacrifice that treasure, or I could use Castle Lothwain to get a card. Just a land. We're going to use all this extra mana for Crucius. Hi, Crucius. Discard this land. Look for something that costs more. Prosper will do it. Prosper, a good card in Rakdos colors. 
They're gonna roll them bones. Turn Timber Symbiosis lets them look at the top seven cards and put a creature into play. But there was no creature. So they lose. Did I have fun on this match? Yes. Yes, I did. Aluna Apex of Wishes. This is almost certainly going to be a combo deck where they're going to be making tokens to mutate onto. Never mind, it's a straight up mutate deck because this person has an Arboreal Grazer. Wow, I, I love getting like corrected first turn. This is just a general, just a general mutate deck. Aluna gets you a free spell when you mutate. We're gonna see a lot of, wow, teamer ramp. This is such a surprise to me because I mean this very, very genuinely. I have not seen a non-combo Aluna deck in months, in literal months. Okay, sweet. I'm here for it. I like Aluna. They've got access to two of their three colors right now. Just Simic stuff. Would I like to discard a card? I would. Uh, I think I'm going to drop Shouldred here because I have two reanimation cards in hand. I'm going to try and get something that costs more than Shouldred. Ooh, an Eldest Reborn. Also works as reanimation. Also gets rid of one of our opponent's creatures or planeswalkers, makes them discard. It's a great three for one. By the way, this is also so fantastic in part because it's an uncommon. You don't gotta burn a rare wild card for one of the best sagas ever printed. Our opponent is mutating or get that gem razor, they're destroying my treasure. I have nothing I'm doing with that treasure, so it's gone. And now they also have a 4-4 with Reach and Trample. Because I don't actually have anything great to do this turn, we're just gonna go ahead and get the boots on. Crucius is now a little bit harder to touch. He's got Hexproof and Haste. I'll discard Elspeth's Nightmare, and we're going to go for something that costs more. If I choose less, it usually means I'm looking for removal, or I'm looking for some form of uh, land, like ramp. They foretold something. Could be a counterspell, draw, unlikely a fight, maybe an extra turn. Lots of different things. Ooh, Goldspan Dragon. I don't need to reanimate when I can continue my ramp atrocity to swing in with Goldspan Dragon. This does have reach, by the way. I'm expecting them to trade. And trade they did. Goldspan Dragon will come back a little bit later, but for now, they only have three cards left in their hand, and I would like them to discard one of them. Kroxa hitting the battlefield, going to sacrifice itself as well. Filling up the graveyard for me, and I'm going to be filling up the graveyard too. I have three different pieces of potential reanimation here. And I'm going to drop the Eldest Reborn because they don't have anything on the battlefield and choose something greater. What costs more than five? Well, yes, Ulamog does cost more than five. Ten, in fact. Not that I think I'll be paying ten. I've got uh, all this going on. Gorklaw! Gorklaw makes a Luna cost so much less. Fantastic. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get rid of that. I'm going to bring out Goldspan. Getting rid of Gore Claw. Goldspan naturally just has haste. We swing in. We now have five mana. And even though I'm not doing anything with this haste because it's post combat, Bond of Revival on Shouldred, bring her back. We're going to discard Ulamog. We're going to choose Lesser. Ulamog is the most expensive card in my deck, so if I choose Greater, um, I'm. Not going to get anything. Oh, Agadim's Awakening. This is both a land and a reanimation spell. Super good stuff. Hi, Merrily Pixie. Potential Mutato target. Hmm, do I want to keep these delicious cards in my graveyard? I'm actually going to start with a Takanuma channel. Fill up my graveyard. Put Ulamog into my hand. And now I'm going to escape Crocs. One, two, three, four, five... They have to discard, but we're going to make them discard again because we're giving Crux a haste. Attacking every part of the opponent, their hand, their creatures, their life total. Ah, I'm just a little 6-6. Six, six. If they block the 6-6 six, six here. They take 8, 9, 10, 11. Not quite dead. If they don't have any cre if they don't have anything in hand, they just lose three life. Right now, they just have that foretold card. This is mana, 
And I might need this mana. They are able to cast a Luna, though. But a Luna can only block a single thing here. I feel like we have got such a strong advantage on this battlefield. Barley Pixie is just like, oh my god, if I draw a card, if I draw a card, I'm going to lose life because there's a soldier on the battlefield. Having probably like a little panic attack. Itty bitty bitty panic attack. Or maybe this is assault rope. Or maybe they had to pee and they left their computer on. Maybe their computer crashed because we just had such a powerful attack. I think it's assault rope though. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and fast forward to the end of the game. I'll see you in a few. And it's victory for Crucius. Big and Large is playing Big and Large with Lelia the Blade Reforged. She likes when things are exiled from your deck. And she exiles things when she attacks it. She's got haste. She goes fast. She hits face. She's a really, really cool commander. And also, uh, she can go crazy with Cascade because she sees every single card that gets exiled with Cascade and says... Ooh, look at that. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, look at that. And gets a plus one, plus one counter for each of those cards. They start out with a Grim Lava Mancer and a Rahilda doing crime and exiling cards from their graveyard to deal damage to my face. Uh, I will want to definitely cast a spell this turn because if I don't, Rahilda transforms and she gets double strike. Hopefully, I'll be able to Coligan's command and get rid of Rahilda not too long from now. But dealing two damage to her, or we could do Fiery Temper and a Crucius. There are fruit flies. Hovering around me. Sorry. What's happening? Oh, they played Lelia! And they stole my Magda! We'll go ahead and get down Crucius here. I'm going to discard Fiery Temper. Choosing something that costs less. I could actually use a land here. I did get a land. I'm going to use this treasure generated by Crucius to kill Lelia before she gets any bigger. Now, Rada, still kind of scary when they attack in. And could be combined with damage off of, say, Grim Lava Master or a Shock or a Bolt to get through Crucius and then play Magda. Again, Method's Enthusiasm! Crucius is dead, and the next creature they cast is actually going to be bigger buffed by one since they did one excess damage they exile off the top it's a prosper man that's my prosper i'll have you know deal two damage and have you discard a card notably i am fueling the grim lava mancer by putting things into the graveyard but i'm also cutting them off from being able to cast things which i think is more important here they didn't get a fourth land, so right now they are sitting on not enough to replay Lelia. Ooh, Sword of Forge and Fire. That is protection from half of my colors and the only kill spell I have in hand, but not my board wipe. I think we're going to get Crucius out again. I'm going to discard Ulamog, and I'm going to choose something that costs less than 10. Ulamog's the most expensive creature. If I choose more, I get nothing. I am Crucius. The Sword of Mountain Dew in Doritos gives them an unblockable creature and lets them play an extra land this turn and exiles the top two cards of their deck. What do they get? Magmatic Channeler, who's getting the buff? Nice, that was the next creature they cast, so that's what they get. Now let's see, we could wipe the board. We could just kill the Magmatic Channeler. Uh, we got choices, choices, choices. Let's start with swinging in. Elspeth's Nightmare. Do I want to just see what they have in hand? Not yet, not yet. I'm going to discard Inferno of the Star Mounts. Choosing something that costs more. I like Shuldred. Thank you, Shuldred, for showing up. I don't have that many cards between 6 and 10. It's Shuldred or... Um, Cityscape Leveler, so I kind of knew what to expect here.
They're going to get to exile their top two cards again. It's two lands, they can play both of them. Scarily enough, I'm at four life. There's a solemn simulacrum. And they'll have a lot of potential attackers next turn. Show me your secrets. It is a mountain! I could wipe the board. I could play Sheldred. I kind of like... Sheldred and then using Terminal Agony. Since it gives me a blocker, I'll have two on the ground. Their largest one. They could still kill me through the Grim, Grim Lava Mancer, doing damage directly to me, though. This has haste, so I'd have to bring something back to block. They also have the Crawling Barons. I'm going to swing in with Crucius. We're going to destroy all creatures. Sploosh. Bringing Crucius back to the battlefield. We'll draw a card. I'm going to play a second blocker, Valky. All this, uh, just in case. That's a stone rain. Yep, that's a stone rain. Uh, I am going to do nothing. I'm going to hold all these cards in my hand. If they swing in with Lelia, they could even equip her with the sword first, force me to block with Valky. See what she exiles on her attack in. Oh! Or they could kill my creatures, throw down Lelia, and... That's three damage, but that's pretty close to killing me! We exile their graveyard. Goodbye, graveyard. Cards got exiled. She gets a little bigger. Well, I can play Shouldred. But they can still attack in here. They can animate their Crawling Barons and sacrifice it rather than Lelia. If they do that, I'll be forced to chump block Lelia because she'll become a 6-6. Six -six. Putting on a sword and then a 7-7 seven -seven on her exile. Follow that here with the big oof! And they're destroying my Phyrexian Tower. Cutting me off from one or two mana, maybe. What she's thirst doesn't stop them from attacking in with Lelia again. Because they've got so much mana, they ramp so much off the sword. Sword of Moundu and Doritos. Oh! Or they could just Chandra, and then plus. That's a cheeky way to win. Good game. Vivian Monsters Advocate lets you play off the top of the library and makes beasts every turn that have reach or vigilance or trample. Vivian's pretty cool, but I don't really know what to expect from this deck. Probably some ways to play lands, too. So you can move the lands out of the way to get to the creatures that are on top of your library. And other than that, probably some good, good green stuff. I was about to say, Lanor Elves, Arboreal Gravers, all the ramp that you can get on turn one. And ramp, they did. I don't have much to do on turn one. I have Blood Chief's Thirst. I have a Blazing Root Walla. I can hold this Blazing Root Walla to discard so I can cast it for free, but I'd like to have a creature presence, especially something with three power, which this can have, to just break through this Grazer Ooh, or trade with a Lanor Green Widow. What a nice spider you are. I'm just a little lizard. I don't have three power. We're gonna pass two blocks. And we're going to make our lizard have three power. Just kidding. I have three power. Die! I take a lot of damage off the trample there. And this can come back from graveyard. But in a mono green deck where their domain is always going to be one, not as scary. There is a way for them to actually get full domain off like dry out of the Elysian Grove. No idea if they'll have it, though. 
We could go for the throat, or I could just throw down Crucius. Crucius, please discard for me. Sheldred, whispering one, and get something that costs less than seven. We gotta land. Seven's just a lot of mana. Primal adversary swinging in for four. I'll take it. Daylight Ranger, they get to explore. That moves lands off the top of their library. Or puts things in the graveyard. Ooh, a voracious Hydra. No voracious Hydras? How could you possibly deny the call of the big Hydra? Swinging in with Goldspan Dragon that lets me hold open, go for the throat. I'm going to discard a land, Snow Covered Mountain, and get something that costs more. They swing it in. I don't need this Crucius anymore, so I'm going to trade him. And go for the throat on Primal Adversary. I like that the Arboreal Grazer is just chilling, like, I'll get to block once. Only once, but I'll get to block. Nice! Scavenger News can eat up all the creatures in the graveyard to gain them life and get bigger. But I'm scared of that. So I'm going to use Bloodsheesh Thirst to kill the ooze. One more. Gonna go munch, munch, munch. Stop me from reanimating. Had to get rid of that. Uh, and just to clear the battlefield, let's get this Eldest Reborn. No more Grazers. Swinging with the gold span dragon. Now, once they get to five mana, this Vivian will be able to make creatures with reach, and one can block each turn. Make another, block, make another, block, make another. But they'll be forced to trade into it if they can't get rid of this gold span dragon. Ooh, Basil Mammoth! Gonna draw them a card when I target them with spells or abilities. Sorry, they're permanents. Should have been more clear since uh, they had to discard here. Frog Hemoth in the graveyard. You know, I might want a Frog Hemoth. And I could get a Frog Hemoth. I'm going to attack with the Inferno of the Star Mounts here. So that's 10 damage. We could turn it into 11, 12, 13, 14 damage. I don't think I need that right now. We know what almost everything they have is. They've got the Mammoth, they've got the Hydra, they've got Vivian. So far, it feels like we're getting there. Here comes Vivian. Going to make themselves a happy little blocker. It's the 3-3! Three, three. But they have a couple things here with haste, or that give other things haste. Like, this lets me animate my lands for haste. This just has haste. Uh, I'm gonna go for the frog! It's a good frog. Everybody swings at their face. Is this off by one? Sure is. Hmm, I get to choose four cards to exile. Uh, let's see, what do I want, what do I want? Uh, I actually want some non-creatures. So I think there's only one non-creature in here. I'm gonna hit the Green Widow for sure. Um, Scoos, great. I gain a life. Our Frakemoth becomes a 7-7. Seven, seven. going to discard the Snow-Covered Swamp. Get something that costs more than zero. Archfiends of Ifnir definitely cost more than zero. They did the math, and the math checked out. I battle Mammoth. I wear the Hydra. Oh, what's happening here? They're casting a creature, either from their deck or from their hand. And they're going to be getting another creature that costs less. Oh! I need to dig. Because they've got a lot of fast damage here. They cast this, I believe, for its Blitz cost, because they did pay six, which means they'll be swinging in with five trampling damage on top of the six trampling damage here. Now, I don't know what else they're able to get out here. Maybe a Questing Beast? But I'm going to have to block to stay alive. What you got? Are you planning to kill me this turn? 
Lupine Harbingers, similarly, hits my face 4-4. Four, four. It's got Trample. I will block. Prevent all three damage. That's all I can prevent. And I go to one life. But you know what we do? We live. At one. GG Vivian. Brawl Storm Conduit. Got a nice Is It Planeswalker over here that can copy his spells. Sometimes this Rawl gets played for Stormin. Sometimes this Rawl gets played for just taking tons and tons and tons of extra turns. I'm hoping that this is not purely a control deck, but there's a good chance it will be. We'll play it out. See how it goes. I've got a lightning bolt ready to go. One of those dang high loyalty planeswalker. Comes down plus twos, has six. How pesky. How pesky these planeswalkers. I'm gonna throw down Crucius. And I'll exile... Nightmare Shepherd. She's going to get something that costs more than four. We got Shouldred, Whispering One. We can get her in the graveyard. We could bring her back with Bond of Revival. And it's not out of the question to get her into the graveyard this turn. Playing a land. I'm going to toss down Zorn so I get two treasures instead of one. Go to combat. Attack for three. Going to discard Shouldred. I'm going to choose something that costs less than seven. We got a land. Canyon. Sweet. Brainstorm. Oh, look at you using your brain. I do wonder if they were holding a non-creature counter spell there or just a bunch of different card filtering. I showed you my Zorn. Please respond. Reliquary Tower, an infinite hand size for them. And now Brothers Hood End, destroying Zorn and Crucius, not destroying my treasures in the Cold Steel Heart. Move my commander to the command zone. Yes, please. Thank you. They don't have any creatures, so Shouldred is still very strong here, but not as strong as I would like. I'm actually going to play Ugin instead. If you're going to counter something, I'd rather it be this than the Bond of Revival. It's a negate. Yep, so they do have a non-creature counter spell. We sniffed it out. We sniffed it. Five mana. No lands passing back to me. I'm going to throw down this land and Bond of Revival. Here comes Shouldred. Little speed demon. Speed Praetor. You don't even have any creatures to discard. All right, it's disallow the big counter spell. Sure, fine. Okay. Sure, fine. Okay. You gonna play your commander yet? No, they're gonna go bing bong ding dong. It's midnight now. Pass back to me. They're holding up three mana. I wonder if it's going to be a counter spell. Wouldn't that be crazy? Assemble from parts. Children. This turns my reanimation into a ability that makes me a token. Shelly on the battlefield. Boots? You gonna bounce her? You gonna kill her? Shelly is with the boots! We swing in for four. Is there a River's Rebuke in my future? I suppose we'll find out. They don't have any creatures. They don't sacrifice a creature. But during my upkeep, I'll get to bring back Zorn or Nightmare Shepherd. Yay! Ooh, they paid the three for that. Storm's Wrath. They kill my fake Shuldred. My Zomboy. Aww. Suppose it's time for spiders. It's just a couple spiders. They wouldn't hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. 
Keep a spider boots. How does the spider wear boots? Does it wear just two pairs on like its front legs or on its back legs? Or does it have eight boots that it's wearing on all eight legs? Hour of devastation, destroying everything we know and love. Mm, yes, another board wipe. That's three damage-based wipes. Hey, Sheldred. Nice seeing you back here. Let's get Crucius out and see if he gets countered. He did not. Put his boots on so his feet don't get cold. Swinging for three. I could discard the Ox of Agonis, but I might actually want to play it soon. Lightning Bolt's not doing much for me. I'm going to drop the Ox. I'm gonna choose something that costs more. Cityscape Leveler, who can blast their clock. Don't you love when you shuffle and it's two, two from the top? The old scry bug. Brawl's coming out. They're pressing. Hmm. If they minus, I probably would have bolted him in response. Just to get him off the battlefield. Like, I don't know what you're copying, but I don't trust it. A kind of if near. Counterspell. That's fair. If we were able to get the boots on it, we could have bolted for lethal. Maybe not in my future. I'm trying to decide if I want to get Roll off the battlefield to make them commit mana to it. Or just go for their face. Now there is a good philosophy of face is the place. Bring them down to four. We're gonna put Cityscape Leveler into the graveyard. Do something that costs less. And part of this is because this is not a spell you cast. This is an activated ability. If we can unearth the Cityscape Leveler, then we might be able to just swing in for eight trampling damage. Alchemist Gambit, they're going to take a couple extra turns. Yep, that's what this deck's going to do. How many more extra turns do you think they'll be able to take? We'll find out. Midnight Clock's about to fire. Chandra, Hope Speaking, going to double their spell, the first one that they cast per turn, instant or sorcery. Now let's see what instants or sorceries they find. I mean, there's petty theft. I don't actually know if that counts for her. You could bounce my boots. Lightning Bolt on the face. They're just gonna double Lightning Bolt. And Midnight Clock is going to fire. They shuffle their graveyard. They draw a fresh seven. Still four life remains. This Brazen Borrower, by the way, still able to bounce this. But they would have to get it out this turn. It's only until the end of your next turn. It, this is their next turn. For each of the instants and sorceries they they cast or a copy. As a reminder, I do take a damage. Straight to the face. They could absolutely win here. Shark Typhoon? Gonna turn those uh those spells into sharks. Hmm. And they've got some double double going on. Alright, it's it's time warp. So we're actually just dead here. I'm gonna say good game. because they're going to take quite a few turns in a row. Should you be able to copy extra turn spells? I don't think so. I dealt enough with that when we were uh, playing a very, uh, very terrible metagame in standard. Ooh, copying extra turn spells, how disgusting. All right, all you have to do is pass the turn and attack me. Or do that, sure. Chandra Hope's Beacon minus six hits my face. That's game. 
Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of Brawl Stars. As always, if you'd like to watch me record this live, you should come over to twitch.tv slash Amazonian. It's where I stream magic pretty much every single day. I play a ton of Brawl, I get my drafts in, and sometimes I get to play a little bit of Explorer and Standard too, and whatever event they happen to have in Arena in a week. Thank you so much for watching, and have a brawlful day!